Hi everybody, Bobby Ogilvie, Project Manager and Professional Coach. Today's question, what are the seven P's of marketing? So, they are product, place, price, promotion, and the last three which are extended to include people, processes, and physical evidence. So let's go through what they are and why they might help your marketing mix. So I guess first of all, when we're saying marketing mix, it's it's not a plan in and of itself, but these are the seven elements that help come together to compose your plan, right? So you want to be thinking of these seven areas. Um, if you're familiar too with like uh, business model canvas, lean model canvas, you could think of these as, as like components that are coming together that you can sub out and adjust and kind of pivot and iterate over time, right? So it doesn't mean you have to, if, if things need to change, you scrap all of these. You just change the few components that need changing. Right, so the first one, product. You need to know what you're selling. And in this sense, obviously, we mean product or service. But it, it needs to be clear uh, what you're selling and who's going to get value from this. Even if you think of this in a service uh, way, it needs to be clear what that service package is. Um, I, I know one of the uh, the gap areas sometimes you can get into when you're dealing with professional services is it, it's so much of it can have an on-demand or we'll do whatever we need to do kind of tone um, that... Uh, it's not always clear exactly what that transaction, what they're buying is. So the more you can clarify that, the better. Um, and so that just means you want to have different service offerings at different price points and serving different needs. But uh, anyway, you need to be clear what that product is that they're getting. Second, the place, the place where you're selling it. So classically, this would have been, you know, what retail or physical place you need to go to. Now it would also include any place where you're going to buy online, the place that they're going to make that point of purchase, any of your e-commerce components. And in this sense, it actually also deals with market channels, so how they can access you, right? So you might have the main website where they can buy the thing, but you might have half a dozen other ways to reach you, the different channels to reach you. Now, those are actually super important as we get into the online end of marketing. Um, so again, that would be under the place. Uh, price, duh, it's, it's obviously what you're selling at. More important than even what you're selling at and how much margin you're making, you need to think of this in a com competitive context, which is that how much are other people charging for similar services and where do you want to competitively be seen in the marketplace, right? So um, if you think of the, the two big extreme examples of would be a kind of low volume, high, high margin model where you're trying to go for this premium product, right? And how do you price it and position everything so people see you and understand your value as a product. And sorry, I don't just mean in some arbitrary marketing sense. It's like your product needs to speak to that. Your reputation needs to speak to that. Generally, you can't be a new player and just decide you're a premium product, right? Um, and then the other extreme business model would be the uh, you know high volume, low margin model, right? And if you think of like big, big chain stores or, or yeah, people that are almost forced to sell in high volume, that, that's where they make very little per, per unit, but they sell a ton of units, right? And then obviously somewhere in the middle, um, the, again, so in relation to selling that product, your price is helping people perceive what part of the market you're at and how easily, how likely they are to buy this versus maybe how much effort, how much thought they should, they're putting into this. Um, anyway, different products are different in how pricing will, will affect your competitive strategy. Uh, the, the fourth P here, promotion. So this is just really the catch-all element to say what kind of advertising or promotions or selling strategies, or you could think of them as like marketing campaigns, sales campaigns are in play here. Um, because because I have a lot of my background in sales, right, which, you know, you deal with sales funnels, you deal with lead generation, you deal with closing sales. And in some sense, sales, you can attribute to a one-to-one -one labor to an individual like lead or contact, right? You can individualize sales. Marketing is broad and generic. It, it deals with a whole bunch of people or it deals with trying to get demand. Uh, the magic word here would be demand generation. Um, and so that's that's really what promotion is trying to deal with. How would you drive demand towards a new product or service or, or get customers or um, shift customers from one generic product to individual products? I guess that's almost moving them down a pipeline. Um, then that all falls under promotion. Um, yeah, one, I mean, one uh, a couple of examples here so you guys get a sense of this, right? For big companies that have big known standing offers, they don't need to run as many promotions. Some won't run any, right? Um, and that could even fit for big stores. Like my understanding is that Walmart basically never does sales. They always try to keep their prices low, but Walmart's never going to advertise they have a sale. They might liquidate something. That, that's different. But they never might never have a sale. Or And a lot of big high-end firms are like that. They have their service. They know how much they charge for it, and that's it. They don't, they don't, they don't modify that. Uh, other companies might have a ton of promotions, right? I know, I know some companies, and every week they have new promotions. 
uh, I think the fashion industry is like this. They need to have promotions all the time because they're they're trying to drive fast. So they call it fast fashion, right? So that would be, you know, they have a very different marketing mix than, uh, I don't know, how Toyota might sell a car, right? Um, okay, so let's get on to the last three Ps. The, the fifth one, uh, the people. Um, so this has to do with the people that are needed as part of marketing, as part of selling. So in some sense, this is really just the kind of HR ops nod to say who's going to do this work, right? And uh, in any sense of the word. So it could be who's going to make the marketing and graphics material for this or who's going to do the creative copy or um, I guess further down the kind of sales and marketing pipeline, it could be who's going to sell this thing or you know who's going to be uh, the person in the retail store that ultimately sells it to the customer. So again, it's a nod to ops. Uh, it's, it's not as complicated a question. I think a bit more complicated is the next one. So the sixth one is processes. And, and I know actually in terms of the B2B uh, sales work that I do, processes are very important. Um, it, on the sales end of things, it's, uh, the processes are very important because it's about stages of qualifying things. And once you get into knowing uh, the conversion rates of how many people will go from this step to this step and forecasting what your velocity or knowing what your velocity is like you can get better into forecasting which means you can know you know, need more people in this or we are going to make our targets or we're not going to make our targets uh, that's one reason I think processes are very important just just in general processes are very important in terms of teaching and training people as well as standardizing things right as your team gets bigger as your operations get bigger processes become that much more important which is to say it becomes less about how one or two individuals have kind of hacked together or, you know, uh, stumbled together an effective way of doing it versus saying, you know, a standard way you can teach and have everyone adhere to. You can think of its processes also kind of relate to this notion of team standards. This is a team operational standard, right, or standard operating procedures. Um, processes are super important in that sense. So I would place a lot of emphasis on processes. And then the last one is physical evidence. Um, and, th and this basically is, is to say that is there anything... Um, physical they're going to get out of buying it even if we're talking about a service and also kind of starts to have this nod towards uh, ux the user experience of buying right so physical evidence could be as simple as what kind of receipt are you going are you going to physically give them or do you send them like a pdf receipt afterwards you know when they buy something online or it could have to do with um Again, if you think of a physical store, um, how do you want the store to look? I'm thinking back when I when I worked in menswear, right? Our menswear store would have a certain layout, and we would do our merchandising. And you know, beyond the individual product that someone might uh, buy, that whole store is designed to have a certain experience based on its its physical look, its lighting, its whole thing, right? So these are things you you want to consider as part of your marketing. So let's just recap what the the seven P's of of, of your marketing mix are going to be: your product your place, your price, your promotion, and furthermore, the people, the processes, and the physical evidence involved. Hope this has been useful and insightful. Again, I'm Bobby Ogilvie, Project Manager and Professional Coach. Talk to you again soon.